All right, time for one of these videos again. Hello and welcome to Critical Review, the series where I review movies that have just come out or that I've just seen for the first time and want to talk about and am way too lazy to take clips from and edit it into a full-on review. My name is Glassfoot and today I'm going to talk about a movie that I just watched called Code 8 that apparently came out last year. I do not remember it coming out last year, but anyway. I want to talk about this movie, because I just saw it, and it is fucking awesome. Uh, the world of Cody is kind of urban fantasy-ish, probably closer to urban sci-fi. In this film, uh, there are people that have superpowers. However, the use of these powers are apparently banned unless you are registered. Because reasons. Which leads me to several questions, but I'm going to get into those later. So our main character, played by Robbie Amell, Connor, he has powers. He is what is known as an electric in this world. He can control and manipulate electricity. And he is an incredibly strong electric, too. But basically, we see him uh, going through daily life. Uh, the job that he was working at gets shut down because uh, apparently they didn't have a permit to use the powers because logic is it focused. Well, it is now, and I don't feel like recording the earlier parts of this video, so I'm just going to go with it and hopefully it's been this entire time. Whatever. Um, back to what I was saying. Connor, he's an electric with, uh, you know, clearly the ability to control electricity. Um, the job that he was working at gets shut down. He feels he's strapped for cash, and his mother is sick and getting sicker. When we first see her, her hands are, like, covered in what look like ice crystals. Apparently, she has the power to, uh, like, freeze things and whatnot, but it appears that she is for whatever reason, losing control of her ability. It's explained later in the film, but yeah. Basically, uh, while Connor is waiting for a uh, job to come around, he's trying to get work, he ends up falling in with a crowd, with a gang basically, uh, led by Stephen Amell, who actually ends up turning out, uh, led by Stephen Amell's character, uh, Garrett. Um, and just want to say, Stephen Amell in a rated R film, murdering the shit out of people with telekinetic powers is dope and I love it and I want more. But continuing on from there, uh, basically the rest of the movie is Connor kind of getting deeper into this world where he just wants to make enough money to help save his mom because she means a lot to him. And the movie goes from there uh, with heist and just an exploration of their powers. And here's what I like that this movie does very, very well. Because the use of powers are banned and the people with powers are hated because reasons, it makes an actual very, very decent and pretty good analogy for racism. At least that's how I viewed it. I have no clue if that's what the writer was going for. The last movie I remember seeing on Netflix that attempted this and did it very poorly was Bright. Uh, Bright has other problems besides that but they basically just make the orcs black people and eat. <sighs> there are so many reasons that didn't work because I actually tried to explain it. In this world, people with powers are hated for no reason other than they have powers, which, <laughs> my, my biggest question, why not just let them have the city? Like, just, if you don't want to live with people with powers, don't live in the city that has the people with superpowers. That's my solution personally. Um, tell me what yours would be. Mine is definitely move. But yeah, this movie is a lot of uh, fun, especially if you're like me and you like superpowers kind of like seeing the small guy stand up for himself I, I find that very entertaining I, l I like that kind of thing a lot I've always enjoyed movies like this um I one of my personal favorite genres of pretty much anything is urban fantasy where it's like the regular world but not with like extra fantastical elements like superpowers or magic or anything like that uh, one of the, my favorite book series from when I was a kid is the Percy Jackson books. My personal favorite book series of all time is the Dresden Files. Another book series I like is the Iron Druid Chronicles. Yeah, I, 
urban fantasy is my jam. And so seeing a movie that does it so well while having a morally gray character who doesn't want to hurt people but is working for a gang so that he can save his mom. <sighs> I loved that so much. Just also every character interaction works really, really well. Uh, he at one point meets a healer. His interactions with her are great. His interactions with the leader of the entire crew that he works for, they are awesome. Stephen Amell did a great job in this film, by the way. Just, I'm really glad to see him do more amazing work after Arrow. Robbie Amell, he he knocked it out of the park with his performance. All the other characters, they nail their performances really, really well. Yeah, there's not a ton I can say about this. Uh, the uh, Actually, one more quick thing. I was slightly disappointed by the action scenes because a few of them earlier on I thought were fairly well done and then the big climactic battle scene <laughs> they shut out the lights and then lights start flashing and they shoot guns. So you can't see what's going on which personally bothers me because I like to know what I am watching in terms of action and entertainment I personally enjoy like to I personally enjoy being able to see what I am supposed to be seeing on the screen uh, shaky cam darkness really quick editing and fight scenes all bother me on a person level cuz I do martial arts for years so like very well choreographed like Wide takes and fights are my jam. I love those. There were a few, a uh, couple of earlier examples, but the final main, main battle scene uh, didn't work very well, but it still was good-ish because uh, they did have some good fights right after that moment. There is one character in this movie that I absolutely hate, and he is the racist cop character. You all know who I'm talking about. It's the one who wants to just kill the people because of reasons. Oh my god, was he overplayed so much in this film. Whew. Hmm. No. But, you know. Hmm. Not much we can do about that. Though, uh, you know, he he's not a very major part in the film. Uh, so that's kind of understandable that they have him. The guy who plays Han in Fast and Furious, he plays uh, the racist cop's partner in this. He did a really good job. Uh, very fun, entertaining to watch. I'm sorry this one got a bit rambly. I haven't actually done a critical review like this in a while. I normally have a script at this point because, you know, the quarantine. But, whatever. If you want a fun action movie that's about an hour and a half-ish long, I would personally recommend this film. It's very fun. It was greatly entertaining. I enjoyed every minute of it. So overall, I would say this movie has a rating of 16. Not the greatest movie ever, but still highly enjoyable and I'll probably go do a rewatch. By the way, I do 100% have plans to do a full-on review of this at some point in the future. I do not know when that is going to come out. I need to write for that type of thing. But for now, uh, yeah. Code 8, Solid 16, very enjoyable, highly recommend it. If you haven't gone and seen the movie already, I would say you do. It's free on Netflix, so give it a watch and see if you guys enjoy it as much as I did. Hey guys, final part of the video. If you enjoyed that video, uh, please like the video uh, and leave a comment. Uh, if you like the content that I put out and would like to continue to follow me online, uh, please hit the subscribe button. If you'd like to follow me on social media platforms, links to both my Twitter and my Instagram will be in the description down below, as always. And that's all that I have for you now, guys. So, as always, guys, have a great day. Don't forget to love each other, and peace out.